nhưng mà khi nói đến họ thì có nghĩa rằng là cái văn hóa chúng ta và họ là cái văn hóa hai thứ thứ mà rất là khác nhau là chỗ là nếu như chúng ta nói nhiều đến chúng ta hơn thì có nghĩa chúng ta đừng làm chúng ta qua cùng qua các cái I'm in Takaka, which is in Golden Bay in New Zealand. And it's a pretty good place. In fact, it's as close to paradise as you'll ever get. It's a popular place amongst hippies and the counterculture. And just people who want a wonderful, wonderful life. And when I come to a place like this, it makes me reflect on the values that we hold dear when we're working. Because the counterculture are onto something. Sure, in their rejection of capitalism and their uh, anti science aspects of their culture, they embrace a lot of nonsense, but I can forgive them that because at the same time they're exploring and understanding that it's not all about science, or it's not all about hard reality and hard truth, that there are, there's more to life. In fact, there are three transcendentals, three uh, fundamentals of humanity that need to be in balance. And that's truth, beauty, and goodness. Science, art, and ethics. And somewhere along the way in the Enlightenment, and the Industrial Revolution and the growth of science which drove Western culture to some fabulous heights. I mean, look around you at what we've created. But at the same time, uh, we got very truthy. We got very obsessed with rationalism and hard fact as, as the fundamentals of society and behavior and we lost what you might call the, the spiritual side of things. I'm an atheist so when I talk about spiritual things I'm not talking about religion, I'm talking about the other aspects of what makes us human that uh, shouldn't get lost. And I'm an engineer and I'm a skeptic and I'm a science geek and I've spent a lot of my life fighting anti-science and nonsense. But in recent years, probably primarily through the Agile movement, I've, and through advancing age, I've come to understand that um, there's more to life. And in fact, that the philosophical movements which are running through society at the moment are many of them trying to achieve this reunification. Hi there. Hey. And that resonated with me as somebody who's dealt with depression and been through a lot and now cares a lot about the quality of my life and the values that I live by. And I understand that there are more values than just value. And we're seeing that understanding appear in our work, as well as in our culture, as people try and achieve some sort of reunification of the transcendentals. And we, we see that in uh, concepts such as uh, ethical business and and um, uh, you know multiple bottom lines for business and the concept of bringing your whole self to work 
I mean, there was a time when you left uh, sex, politics and religion at the door when you went to work and you were supposed to anonymise yourself as just another corporate drone and not discuss these things with your colleagues. Whereas now, um, we're more and more embracing the idea that people uh, not only have a right to bring those things to work, but in fact are better humans and therefore better workers if we allow them to bring their whole self to work, to feel like they are functioning with integrity. And when you come to a place like this, it just comes home. Uh, if I get a chance, I'll walk this camera around where my daughter lives here. Um, I wish I'd done that earlier this afternoon because she lives in paradise and they have gardens and horses and lots of little hippie houses and they don't really care much about money. She never really knows where the next dollar is coming from. Um, but that's because they know there's more to life. And they value doing the right thing. They value caring for others, sharing. They value living your life in an ethical manner. And I respect that more than I did when I was younger. science, ethics and art. And when we talk about things like Agile and um, even Lean and many of the other uh, bodies of knowledge or ideas that drive our industry, um, our business in general, they're coming from a point that if you follow it all the way back, is that reunification. They're trying to make us whole again. They're trying to say that it's not enough just to make a profit. It's, it's certainly not enough to focus on shareholder value. Friedmanism was, has been described as the most failed idea ever in business. It, it misled us. It, it led to some terribly toxic business behaviours. And so that's either that's busily being discredited um, as we speak and and organizations in general are understanding that it's not about shareholder value it's about the values and if the enterprise observes uh, good values then the enterprise will prosper in the longer term. And that truth is becoming apparent everywhere. And this is what motivates me and it, what motivates Cherry. You saw her just before, she's um, on, the, on the web right now, coaching our, our tribe in Vietnam. They're not just our students, they, they come on our courses, but uh, then she keeps going with those who want to keep going. And uh, they get together every week and talk about the challenges they're facing and, and what they can do about it. 
because we believe in these principles, we believe in this idea. And uh, as it was, we, we had, we, we started up the business agility meetup for Wellington the other night, and we had a group of people getting together. And one of the things, of course, that we discussed was, you know, what exactly is the basic principle or purpose of the meetup? What, what is it trying to achieve? And we went around the room and talked about that. And what we, what was the common thread through it all was trying to make work a better place. And the way to do that is through this reunification of truth, beauty, and goodness. Stop managing people by numbers and, and understand that their fellow human beings, that we have ethical obligations in how we treat them just as much as um, financial obligations. Start uh, appreciating work that's done because it's great in some intangible spiritual or aesthetic way, not because it's great uh, in terms of sales figures. Start working in an organisation that has a vision of a purpose in life, other than shareholder enrichment. And people will want to work there. The challenge that organisations are finally, finally coming to understand is that you can make slaves work. You can make industrial factory workers work. You can make clerical workers work who are just factory workers in the, in the information economy. But you can't make knowledge workers work. And so the people who are doing the high value work in the information service economy their individual outputs are invisible. You can only see the productivity, the outputs of the team, because all knowledge work is ultimately collaborative. So you can't see what they're producing. You can't make them do good work. Knowledge workers will only work if they want to. All you can do is invite them to work. And so, Inviting Leadership is a very good book and is a profound concept that's part of what we do and what we work with. And the only way that people will want to do good work is if they feel like they're working for an organisation that they can believe in. If they feel like they're working in an organisation that has values, not just value, if they feel like they're working in an organisation that's contributing something long-term to society and that cares about them and other human beings. So the truly successful organisations are, and more and more are going to be, those that understand this, that have a strong sense of values, that have a common vision and purpose which is more than just make the rich richer. So you might be uncomfortable with this, but the fact is that the new ways of working, their roots go to socialism. Here I am in one of the most socialist countries on earth and I can tell you it's fabulous. And these roots go back to feminism because we have to stop shutting down half of our society if we're going to be productive and successful and most of all whole. And diversity and the embrace of uh, um, ambiguous gender or, or, or um, Uh, even strange beliefs and religions. But 
having a diverse workplace um, profoundly increases our, our creativity and our innovation and therefore our success going forward. So everything's political, work's political, the way we run our organisations is political and the new world is going to be a world of a reunification of truth, beauty and goodness. It's going to be a new level if you, if you ascribe to um, um, uh, Grace's models of first and second tier culture or integral spiral dynamics ideas of moving into teal and, and purple or um, any of so many other models that, that all suggest that we're reaching a cultural breakthrough of enlightenment. And I have to say, when I walk around a place like Tartica, I can feel it. I can see that this is the future, that the, the best and the deepest from the gut meaning to the word best, the best places in the world are places like this. Places that understand there's more to life than just money. There's more to life than power and dominance and alpha male behavior. That the future of society is a reunification of male and female culture of uh, caring and sensitivity and empathy and humanity, embracing our aesthetics and our ethics to create a place that is good, that feels good, that, that is And that doesn't have to be town, that doesn't have to be a very cool part of New Zealand. That can be the culture of our work. That can be how we do business. That can be how our organisations function just as much as our society. And I prof profoundly hope that I can help our clients to move their organizations into something that feels a bit more like Tarkika.